This episode of 10K MMA is brought to you by Castle Point Analytics. Head over to castlepointanalytics.com right now and use promo code 10K, that's 10K, for 50% off your first purchase of either the decision or the knockout package, which provides you with an in-depth look at all the upcoming fights. They give you their favorite parlay, their favorite value play, and so much more. That's castlepointanalytics.com and check out their Instagram at castlepointanalytics. It's time! I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. I would absolutely kill you if you ever did something like that. You could never, you could never kill me. Oh, I, I think you're good. This is the main event of the evening. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another week's edition of 10K MMA. Sorry, my computer was talking back to me, and I think I could only hear that, so that kind of threw me off. But I'm um, joined by your normal co host here with Ka- uh, Kyle Coleman. Uh, obviously, we had the guest edition last week. That was a great conversation with John Morgan, but um, back uh, back with the dynamic duo here. So, uh, Kyle, how's it been? Oh, uh, it's been good, man. How have you been? Good, good. good. Um, it was, uh, yeah, I had to, we had a roll soul there. It was just a last minute interview we got. We were lucky to get it on, and it was a fun conversation we had with John. So, hopefully, the, the two of us can get that going, you know, in the in the future again. But um, the the U of the world of UFC is very exciting right now to say the least oh yeah not as ever right Mm -hmm. (laughs) we've had now two pay-per-views with full fans in attendance and that is yet to to disappoint and Mm -hmm. um, we can just let's just dive right into it man what would you think another good pay-per-view i loved it it was a great card um even the undercard i thought was awesome um yeah charles Oliveira winning uh, the lightweight title after so long i mean it was hard not to feel for the guy his celebration after jumping out of the cage giving his trainer a hug Hug, giving like fans hugs and or family or whatever hugs and stuff like that just losing it security's trying to like hold him he's just not caring and it was that was awesome to see man and even when bruce yeah. was like announcing his name and he had to put his shirt over his head because he was yeah like, fighting back the team oh yeah i mean what so deserved for you know mm-hmm. a guy like that and the journey he's had in the in the ufc and it was just it was pretty emotional watching like you know it's Mm -hmm. it's cool man it's cool when these guys win and they get emotional like that uh yeah i loved it like as soon as i saw him jump out of the cage i was thinking like well he's not gonna go hurt anybody like but i just got flashbacks to connor khabib for a sec but (laughs) just like now he's i don't think he'll do that he was just going to give uh mr rogan some love right oh yeah yeah he just got blood all over the desk or something like that yeah yeah and i saw yeah did you see his celebration too when he's in his hometown Mm -hmm. i think that was today oh no i I don't think i saw that oh checked out so they got like they're doing like a parade for him and he's from somewhere in brazil i don't know do Mm -hmm. you know what town specifically it's not rio so it's one of the smaller cities i think okay De- yeah it definitely um, looked yeah. like a smaller city because it was really mm. cool he was on top of this huge bus and and i don't know if he drinks or not i i can't imagine maybe i mean i don't know he might yeah I'm sure he does because he looked like he was just partying and having the time of his life and oh yeah it looked like the, it looked like <laughs> it looked like the washington capitol stanley cup parade oh, oh god that's great i love that's, that that's how many people were out they'll celebrate Jeez. Talk about fighting for a lot, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's nuts, man. So, I mean, let's dive into that fight a little bit. First round, mm-hmm. it looked like Chandler had him. He stoned it him. Did well at uh, well, even the start, the start. It, I mean, he ends up letting Oliveira take his back, which you know that's the last guy you want taking your back. And then instead of like leaning forward trying to shake him off, he decides to like drop, like backdrop. Yep. And lets Oliver sink in a, that leg that uh, leg triangle. And I'm thinking like, okay, he can hand fight for a bit. There's still like three minutes left in the round. He's gonna get choked out. Yeah. Somehow he survives. Rocks Oliveira. I don't know how Oliveira took that. Yeah. And then, you know, 20 seconds into the next round, it's over. Like, it's over. It's just, I don't know, man. That's just that was just a whirlwind of a fight. But that yeah, that yeah. Next round was a was an absolute war. And um, he if you go back, and I can't. I don't know who who tweeted it. Um, but, uh, but, uh, he, he was on the ground, sorry, I'm in the home office here, but it was on the, it was on the ground. And when he was, when Chandler went to go ground and pound, 
Oliveira starts moving his head and it looks like he's out of it, but he was literally, he knew like where Chandler's punches were coming from. It's, mm-hmm. it's the small things that you don't really notice till you go back and look and it was incredible. So he yeah. avoided most of those ground and pounds. Yeah. If you're Chandler T, you can't just dive into that cause you're going to get submitted. Like I'm surprised there was a couple times when Chandler was on top inside Oliveira's guard, like he'd have his hands on the mat, which like, if you've ever trained in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, if you're in someone's guard, the last thing you do is put your hands on the mat because that's how you get Kimura or Wide open, right? a number of different things. And with all of air, like, I wouldn't play that game. Yeah. I, I'd just make them stand up. Yeah, absolutely not. So, yeah. But either way, all in all, that was a, for as short as it was, that's, that was just an absolute war. So that was, mm-hmm. you know, fireworks to say. That least. was awesome, man. What is next for each individual? I mean, Oliveira, we were talking, mm-hmm. I, I th- and I saw Ariel made a statement today. He said, you have to give Connor that fight if he beats Dustin. No. Um, yeah, right. Like, what do you think? Oh, Ariel, Ariel's just in it for clicks. I don't think he's making any sort of serious, like, analysis on this one. Um, I think the winner of Connor and Dustin does get a shot eventually, but Justin Gaethje's got to be next. Right. And Gaethje has to be next. I mean, yeah, I, and how pissed do you think Justin would be if all of a sudden they at right after that after the fight? I don't even think they'll wait to announce it, will it? Because that's not till July. I mean, they're gonna yeah. have a title fight before that. Yeah, Oliveira likes those quick turnarounds too. Yeah. So like, he'll be wanted. Justin hasn't fought since October. Yeah, Oliveira's right. fought twice since then. So it's like, yeah, he'll be ready to go. So yeah, maybe put one. Yeah, I, I, I would. I would assume it'd be probably what toward, towards October, the end of the year. Uh, probably, yeah. I mean, I can see the winner of, uh, like, in Ariel's defense, if Connor does win that, and regardless of the outcome of Gage G. Oliveira, if they give him a title shot after that, I don't hate it, unless, like, some other crazy stuff happens, or if Chandler absolutely dusts someone, like, between then, I don't know. Yeah. Well, like, a lot of crazy stuff can happen, but yeah. so I think Dan Hooker, Dan Hooker is still in the conversation, despite the Chandler loss. Yep. I still think skill wise, he's one of the tougher guys to deal with. He's going to give everyone else that are up at the top problems. Oh, absolutely. I, and, and yeah. I mean, do you, do you run Chandler back with him again? Do you think, or I mean, no, I think Chan- Chandler, I think might get the loser of Dustin and Connor. Yep. I don't think either one of those guys want that fight. I don't think Connor wants that fight. I can't. Yeah. I think the only fight, only fight Connor would want would be Oliveira for the title. Or if he loses to Dustin again, I think he'll probably just go for a third Diaz fight. Yeah. Which makes sense, like, because he doesn't like quick turnarounds and he wants money. So, I mean, yeah. he's going to do it, sells. Yeah. So, yeah, Connor's not just going to try and work his way up the ladder again. He's going to want. Yeah. He's, gonna want he's not going to fight Dan Hooker. He will not. <laughs> you, yeah. He's not going to. No that, chance. That That's a nightmare matchup. So. That matchup is, oh, he'd get slapped. Yeah. I, or yeah. choked out, maybe. I don't know. He'd, be, he'd get beat, but. One, yeah. One yeah. way or the other, but um, yeah, e- either way, there's a lot of potential for both those individuals. Uh, this is obviously not the last you're going to see of Mike Chandler. I mean, oh, it's, no. It's only second fight. He's one. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, he's, he's 35 now. He's not young. Yeah, right? That's so, he's, so he does still have time left, especially with how like training conditions evolved. He's in great shape, at per- as always, but he's lost – the way he's lost fights – is uh, like we lost to uh, Patricio Pitbull after Pitbull came up from 145 uh, a year t- a couple of years ago in Bellator. He just caught him. He just got slept. Yep. yep. Like he's a he's a tendency of like getting caught, and with some of these top guys at 155, I mean that's kind of their whole mo. Right. So I mean, like you even saw there. So yeah. Um, well, yeah. Either way, though, I think he he'll be back eventually, but he's gonna have to, like you said, do it do it fast. But um, yeah, that was a one hell of a title fight, and um, the fight before that, we can just dive right into that. That was, that was sad for oh, me to watch. Uh, that was tough, Tony. I mean, he just yeah. got, and when he didn't tap out there, when uh, was that like the knee bar? Knee it was bar, a yeah. it was a heel hook, oh, yeah. which is worse than a knee bar yeah. in my opinion, because it like basically he's got his foot in his armpit he's cranking on it and then you just crank his knee to the outside the way it's not supposed to go yeah and you can see it pop once or twice kind of not it's not it wasn't super obvious but then you see the like the look on his face i've never seen that look on tony ferguson's face even when all their arm barred him right and i he, didn't see that and he yeah. broke his arm and that was way yeah that was that looked way that was, worse that was that looked worse For but oh right. man that I wish he would have tapped because he was clearly compromised after that. Like, and that's yeah. the same knee. He's blown out both of his knees before. Yep. So, I mean, 
it was just <sighs> a sad end of the Ferguson era. And it, it sucks, man. The fight that broke him was the was the Gaethje one, right? Yeah, it's so much damage. He just teed <sighs> off on him, and and then because uh, that was kind of a weird stoppage too. And when Gaethje beat him, or Herb had to step in. He's like. It was a good stoppage. Are, he was standing up right. It was just you don't. Really His corner that. should have stopped it before then. Yeah, he should way have, before right. then. Because he he was standing yeah. up and he was like closing his eyes and he was almost guessing where Justin was and yeah, that was, was like that's enough. And then that just his, kind of saw it. I think mm-hmm. that just broke him. And Those was, last few fights have been so tough to watch because like with the cha- with the Oliver one, it's just it wasn't as bad because it was like okay, Oliver is one of the best grapplers we've ever seen. That's yeah. not terrible, I guess. But the Gaethje one, I think that extra weight cut he did because he cut for the Khabib fight just because he wanted to. Yeah. And he's he's not a small 155 or like he weighs probably 175, 180 walking around. Yeah, at least. So. Yeah. And, and, and even when you saw them, they were announcing it and, and it, the camera wasn't even really showing Dariush. And uh, we can touch on him in a minute, but it just kind of mm-hmm. showed he just Tony just kind of stood there. And just looked at the ground, and he just kind of like it's it's over. And <laughs> it was it was sad. It was emotional to watch if you've been mm-hmm. a Ferguson fan for a long time. And look at the luck that he's had, right? I mean, what was the win streak he had at total? Was it, was it 12, twelve? Maybe. Not I want to say it was twelve, man. Besides the what was the one belt that he held briefly because of uh, interim? He was the interim champ for a while because Khabib uh, got hurt i think he right. blew his acl or something like that so it wasn't like legitimate i mean it's a legit sure a champion's a champion but in his i mean eyes, it wasn't he was it was he was consensus top two in the world with khabib yeah like consensus like everyone knew it was it was like these two guys every time they tried to make the fight it was just like someone gets hurt covid khabib gets food poisoning from tiramisu like it was crazy God, the that fight sucks, that man. Just was meant to never happen right and mm-hmm. so yeah it was unfortunate you go look at that and then, and then tony just I, to- I think in hindsight we know how it goes though yeah oh yeah it, yeah it, it's because it, maybe there's a chance he, he does something but we know what I don't know. Uh, Habib would have done. But either way, watching Tony, Tony mm-hmm. just hear that decision, and he just kind of walked out of the ring. It was <laughs> it was tough. So Yeah. I don't – I mean, do you even see him fighting again after at this point? Like, I don't know. If if he does, it, it'd probably be like a big money fight against another guy who in the division who's kind of on the decline. Um, I'm trying to think who that might be. Because they won't put it in with Barboza after what Barboza just did. Nope. Because I don't, I don't even want to see that. I don't want to see that. Um, no, definitely not. And if and Connor loses, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe, and that would be for what? Because he's gonna have to have surgery on his knee. So I mean, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I guess Connor likes those big ter- those uh, long layoffs too. I guess, right. but so, that we'll see. I don't know, it, it's sad to see. It's sad to yeah. see. We'll see what what's next. I don't think he'll ever fight again. But yeah, it, it, yeah. It's, it's the end of an era. Not a bad – like, he had a good career, but – Yeah, Hall of Fame career, probably. Yeah, definitely. Like, one of the best to never win a t- – to never officially win the title. Like, he, yeah. there's an argument for him being the best, honestly, but – Just sucks to see him go out the way he did. Yeah, so, um, that was – yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we see him again, but don't be surprised mm-hmm. if, if we don't. But um, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll jump down then to – I believe this was the first fight on the main card, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, wow, that was a way to stop Jeez, that was nuts. Barboza is an absolute killer. I love watching him fight, man. And Gal, we'll talk about the like the the way that uh, that it happened, like the. the I'd never seen that before. That that was crazy, and I, like because I think- you'll see in boxing. I watch a lot of boxing too. Um, You'll see in boxing every now and then, like a guy will get hit with a liver shot. He'll yeah. bounce a little bit, then try to throw a punch, and be like, "Oh, my body's shutting down." He'll wince and yeah, he'll yeah. Like, like with this one, dude gets caught on the chin, bounces a couple times, and then he's like, "Oh, I'm going to sleep." I've never seen that were, before. Like, fighting it, he was almost like fighting yeah. his mind. It was just crazy. like that's impressive. <laughs> At the same time, like that's how people get hurt, man. He literally, yeah, that's how you get severely injured. And he mm-hmm. landed a couple shots on him too, I believe, when he was on the ground. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, man, that was just uh, we'll we'll try great and- fight. That, that was yeah. probably fight of the night, honestly. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they yeah. got th- thanks to Tony. They got a seventy five thousand dollars bonus if they if that was fight right. Because <laughs> yeah. Tony and the presser said, Dana, let's get the let's bump up these bonuses. Do you think they're gonna keep it like that, or is that just gonna one? Oh, Dana can afford to bump to seventy five. It's not yeah. like it's 
he can afford to yeah. bump it to 200k but we've honestly yeah we've we've we discussed that we don't need to beat the dead horse on that one. yeah um, yeah so when it happens then we'll have a conversation on that but for sure yeah, yeah crazy fight um we'll try and get the clip in there too on that for those of you that didn't see the knockout because it was, it was that absurd. was sick Dude, Barboza still got it, man. Like, yeah. I think coming back up, I think coming up to 155, because he was at 145 for a while. He fought Connor there. Yep. I think he's kind of found his groove, like a yeah. uh, lightweight. Yeah, he, he looks clean in there. So, um, yeah. And we'll see where, I mean, it, fighting, that was Featherweight they fought at, right? They fought at uh, Lightweight, I thought. Okay. Like, okay. Or was it Featherweight? I'm not sure. Let me, let me, can we get, uh, remember when we talked about that? We're going to have Andy be our guy. <laughs> yeah, we, we need Andy to get in on this. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Andy, you're making us give faith. It's uh, it was, uh, oh my gosh, featherweight. It was. Featherweight. It was a featherweight, yeah. Okay, but thanks, Andy, for nothing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so well, hopefully Barboza can keep Cruz because he is fun to watch, man. When he's doing that, to people. Um, then the let's just talk about briefly the main card of the prelims, which was I'm sure everybody saw that clip. That was one of the more viral clips. Oh, um, this is tough. And uh, the the way that arm snapped, it it wasn't good. But um, I don't know. That's... Did you hear it break right away? Oh yeah, yeah. Like is I couldn't tell if it was his arm or his shoulder. Yeah. But well, the way that he had the arm bar set up was um, it was higher up. Like it wasn't on the elbow. It was like a little bit higher up on the arm. You don't normally see that. And then you hear a pop. It's just like that's yeah. not good. It was bad. And the for, so we're talking about the Salzman uh, Munez Munez fight. Yep. Munez. Um, he. Toss him. He was on his like back, and and uh, Jakar was standing, right? Yeah. yeah. And then he moved, uh, kind of like got his leg over into an arm bar, and it just, oh, just that was so tough to watch. Uh, that, that was, was that was one of the more gruesome. That's two gruesome yeah. injuries in a row. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. I I, I bet you Weidman's was a little bit worse. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, worse. yeah well, like with Jack Ray too. That's not the first time he's had that happen. Um, they kind of talked about this during the broadcast, but he's a. In terms of jiu-jitsu, he's a world-class guy, multiple-time world champion. He uh, had a, mat, a, a jiu-jitsu match against uh, Hodger Gracie, who, if you're not familiar with the Gracie family, that's like royalty in the jiu-jitsu world. They won everything for a long time. He's beating Gracie. Gracie gets him in an arm bar, snaps his arm. Jacare doesn't tap. He tucks his arm into his belt and finishes the match so he can still win on points. That's absurd. It's like, this dude's insane. Like, he's... That's if any. Like, I'm glad they stopped the fight when it did because I think with uh, MMA rules, refs usually stop the fight yeah. when they hear a pop or when they hear a crack or something like that. Yeah, of some sort. So. And he's, he's, he's 40 did. now. He's old, man. Yeah, he doesn't uh, need to be putting his arm in his – or put yeah. his arm in his, his, his waistband there and fight when you're that old. Yeah, like uh, that's two bad losses in a row for him too because he lost to Holland when Holland, Holland knocked him out when Holland was on his back. back. Oh, that man. was crazy. So he's had a rough last two fights. So. Yeah, if I'm Jacare, I don't know if I hang it up quite yet because like he's he was in a decent position in both of those fights Yeah. until yeah. those two things happened. But, I mean, after he heals up, maybe he has another run at it. But at the same time, like – I don't know. I think his the highlight of his MMA career was probably, I mean, the Yoel Romero fight was insane. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, the stuff when he was younger, he was so fun to watch. Just one of those guys who never really got the credit he deserved because he came in from another sport and was kind of got to, got an MMA a little bit later than most guys did. But yeah, he's a uh, he's a stud, man. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of lot of lot of you know, fun things to watch that night from that arm snap to the, to mm. the matrix knockout. People were calling it to, to the new champion. But, yeah. Um, and then obviously we have some fun cards ahead and we don't need to dive into, we'll save that uh, for the Adesanya Vittori, which is not. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I still hate that matchup, but yeah, right. Right. I don't think it's going to be even close, but no. Um, no. either way, stacked card. Um, yeah. That is a very good card. Yeah. That'll be fun, but we'll, we'll cover that a little, a little more down the road here um <laughs> i know that you were probably mad when we talked when i talked about this but i wanted to uh, get your reaction to john when i asked john morgan about uh mr paul and mr cormier's altercation <laughs> mm-hmm. yep <laughs> i tried not to but i feel like it was, you know clickbait that's what works yeah right? it's you know it's it's the business we're in <laughs> so keep the lights on so did you <laughs> did you see the the whole alter the whole gotcha had altercation yeah, I, for a I did see that, like, well, I think, I think Jake Paul, he had cut above his eye or something like he that. He got beat up bad. His mouth was bloody. He got Good. On the eye. Like, boys, 
boys and Brandon Shaw was talking about that too. He in the dudes that he walks around with are the like some of the yeah. baddest dudes. Like they look like they're NFL offensive linemen. They're, like and, and they're just like just no just massive. Yeah. Massive oh my god. Beans. Like and, and, it's the best security money can buy because I mean it's you know it's Floyd Mayweather you can afford it. Right. But I mean if I'm Jake Paul like. Like getting DC's face a little bit is one thing because you know DC's a broadcaster, he's not going to do anything, he's going to play it up for clicks. But a guy like Floyd, I don't think he cares. Like, he'll just be like, okay, I don't care, I'll have my goons just beat the living crap out of you. <laughs> like, he's, I, I hope he gets the crap kicked out of him at some point, but at the same time, I hope he's a little bit more careful because if he does something like that to the wrong person, he's going to get himself hurt. Absolutely. And, and like you said, he was, yeah. he's lucky. There's a lot of people that were there at the time because he got mobbed pretty severely by a mm. lot of people. And I don't know where Logan even, it's like, he's not even fighting Floyd, you know, and he just went there to, I mean, I can't imagine the amount of money. I saw the TikTok that he made and, and the views were just off the charts. So like John Morgan said, they're yeah. like, the bank. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't, I still don't think either one of them will ever fight somebody that's, has a chance of actually hurting them i think the logan paul floyd fight if it happens i'm not i'm still not even convinced it's gonna happen yeah. if it does happen it's gonna be floyd just outpointing him and embarrassing him in a boxing sense for however long the fight goes yeah because i'm pretty sure it's not even sanctioned i think it's an exhibition technically it's an, yeah it's just all like it's not a sanctioned fight oh no state athletic commission in their right mind would ever sanction that no right so, so like it's it's not worth watching i know bubba always like Every time I talk to Bubba, he's just like, Coleman, you're going to watch it. You're going to watch it. Like, no, I'm, I'm not going to watch it. I don't care. Like, hey, there's better things to watch that night. Yeah, Bubba. Like, I'd rather watch – so. I would rather watch Jeopardy reruns than yeah. watch that. I'd say as big as – and as big as a Vikings fan, I'd rather watch that Jeopardy with that scumbag Aaron Rodgers than watch that crap. So. Yeah, I thought you were going to say the Blair Walsh missed field goal on repeat. But. <laughs> or that too, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I will not be watching that. I, I don't care yeah, about it. So, so th yeah. That's all the time we'll, uh, we'll give those guys, even though that uh, it doesn't matter because whatever – Unless one of them gets virally knocked out. Yeah, that would be something. Like I'll laugh at it for a bit, but at, at the same time, it's like I – whatever, yeah. man whatever oh, yeah. enough of that um mm -hmm. fight fights this weekend mm -hmm. not much to talk about uh the one that we can spend some time on i'm really excited i i hope that he doesn't hope to god something doesn't happen to him the way his, his history has been going but cody garbrandt is back in action he's headlining mm -hmm. um put yeah this is just at the apex in vegas so and i think i saw a lot of guys are asking dana too and they were tweeting saying like let's start getting these fight nights with fans going and so Dana's working on that, but I'm sure that's mm -hmm. tough to pull off right now. Well, it sounds like Las Vegas just uh, lifted their mask. Yep, they did. Stuff. I saw that. So that's um, maybe that they'll they'll start because where do they usually do fight nights? I I, I mean I usually I know there's one in Minneapolis here. Oh, uh, they do them. They only travel around, but I think uh, like the majority of their stuff is typically in Vegas, just because yeah. there's a number of venues they can rent out. Um, yep. And the headquarters is up or down there, but either yeah. way, it'll be it'll be fun because last time Cody fought. Without fans, he got that uh, that walk off pretty rare. You see that the, was nuts. I'm surprised he's not ranked higher after that. Yeah, because boy, that was and they and because Moraes was I think he was like the second or third ranked yeah. bantamweight. Yeah, I think so. And, and so it wasn't an easy yeah. the cakewalk for him. And man, no, that, that was, was nuts. Someone said it was like he just threw three years of frustration into one punch, knowing that time was coming out and. He did, but he also looked a little bit more measured than he usually does. Yep. Because usually, like, when he comes out, he got hit a couple times by Marais. Marais is a good fighter, obviously, yeah. but yeah. usually he just, like, starts swinging. On that, it was a little bit more composed, it looked like, which is kind of scary to see. Yeah. But uh, So we'll hard. see if that – yeah. So we'll see if that uh, plays out again, but – Glad to see he's back. I really want to see him and Sean O'Malley fight at some point. Oh, man. I yeah. Know the trash that. talk, the memes. Oh, oh. Just, that would and sell, right? I, oh, yeah, stylistically, too. Like, both guys are, I mean, they're knockout artists to an extent. So, I mean, and who's, someone's probably – Who's yeah. Sean even fighting on the Connor card July 10th? I don't even think it's uh, – some I don't even remember. It's not going to be a close fight. I think they he's going to beat him pretty him bad. someone to give him someone to put him on the card with <laughs> I think so. I'm going to look it up real quick. I don't think it's anyone, like, significant. Yeah, because you don't have Andy in here. Andy. To, to freaking pull our crap up. Like, what do we pay him for? Yeah, Andy. You, you, if you're watching this when, when it's posted, like, what? Come on. 
your salary is going to get down. Uh, Luis Smolka. Smolka, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so. Who, uh, I'm not sure what his record is. I haven't heard of him before. Probably pretty mediocre, I'm assuming. He's 17 and 7, 8 and 7 in the UFC. So he's been around a while. 8 and 7, yeah. So he's been in the around. UFC, uh, yeah. Nah, he'll, t- he'll piece him up. But um, yeah, get, Gar- get Garbrandt a win. And then if, uh, when Sean wins, then that's the fight to make. There you go, right? Because uh, mm-hmm. obviously, I mean, when are they going to run back the Bantamweight? I talked to John about that too a little bit, the whole Bantamweight. Because the Bantamweight division is probably one of the most stacked, if not the most. Yeah. The that fight's not even going to be on the main card either. Yeah, right. So that's a, it's, that's a prelim? That's a prelim because the main card's Connor Dustin, Gilbert Burns, and Wonder Boy. Oh, really? Jessica I, Jennifer Maya, Ryan Hall, Ilya Taporia, Brad Tavares, and Akhmedov, and then Greg Hardy tied to Ivasa. So Hardy's back. So they didn't put yeah. Hooper's not on the main card either. Then isn't he fighting that night? Yeah, he's on the undercard too. Jeez. <laughs> well, Hooper's been an undercard guy. I think yeah. the last few times around. Because he had that one loss, and then he got back though with that nasty. Was that a heel hook too that he went on? I can't remember if that was a heel hook or a knee bar. Either way, it was disgusting, yeah. and I yeah, don't want to be in the that he landed. Was like one of those somersault. Uh, uh Imanari roll, yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was sick. But made famous by Tony Ferguson, but <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, Tony rolling for those back in the day. But R.I.P. Yeah, um, R.I.P. But, man. But yeah, that's basically the only. Uh, f- I mean, if you're a, a super fan like uh, the two of us, you'll watch all these. Oh yeah, I'm excited. But, it's uh, free. It's on ESPN. Like why not? Yeah, Hermanson's on the card too. So. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. They rescheduled. I'm excited for that. Yeah. So free, yeah, free fight on ESPN if you guys are bored Saturday. Throw it mm-hmm. on. Um. If uh, if you need to toss on the ESPN Plus too, just get the app. Um, but uh, we don't need to talk about Dana and his prices again. So <laughs> yeah, there's also uh, certain websites you can use. I'm not endorsing the use of illegal websites. Yeah, illegal. Websites. I'm just what? suggesting the fact that Dana is not as good at shutting them down as he claims he is. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. All dark, no bite. <laughs> yeah. Now Dana's gonna come after us. <laughs> I didn't say anything illegal. Uh, Settle down, Dana. Uh, yeah. But yeah, hopefully Cody. I and I think he will. Um, he'll he'll get, get the win. Back I think in the win column. Mm-hmm. And his foe Dillashaw. Uh, Gavin, uh, John yeah. and I also spoke about that, and we haven't had a chance to talk about that. What What's he doing sparring with dudes that are cutting him up the way that they're cutting him up? Like, I don't know, man. Like, because he's uh, was that training at. He was training with Dwayne Ludwig, I think, out yes. in Colorado for yes. that. Yeah. And Dwayne Ludwig, uh, one of the best striking coaches in the world. It's like him, Trevor Whitman, then a massive gap, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Great coach. I don't know what he's doing letting him spar with guys that are throwing. Like, you shouldn't be taking an elbow like that in sparring because when you look at how guys are sparring anymore, like, you talk to someone like Max Holloway, he doesn't even, like, actually, like, spar. Nope. He just uh, – they do, like, footwork. They do a lot of, like, shadow boxing. That uh, Connor's done, talked a lot about that, too. Yeah, but honestly, at that point, you're just taking unnecessary damage, and you're opening yourself up to the possibility of injuries. Like the only purpose for sparring anymore, if you when you're at that high of a level, is basically just like maybe get some calluses on your face going into a fight, so you don't get cut as easily. Which yeah. like, yep. yeah, that helps, but at the same time, elbows won't do that. Elbows just cut, man. Yeah, it's like, sliced them open bad. So and it's, it's so even, dumb. I know they canceled this fight. I don't even think they pushed mm-hmm. it back, right? Like, yeah, because who's he supposed to fight? Um, well, I wish we had. Was it Cody? Andy, Andy. Was it Cody? I don't. Was it? Let me see. TJ I think it might have been Cody. TJ Dillashaw next fight. TJ. Pull out fights on May. TJ Dillashaw and Diego. Okay, here we go. Hold on. It was supposed to be May 8th. Um, yep. It was Cor. Oh, Sanhagen. 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 That would have been a great fight. Yeah. I, yeah. God, because Sanhagen's a stud too. It's like. Yeah. Damn. Man. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, because if, if Dosha gets that, he probably gets a title shot. Big, big time, yeah. Like, because he never, I don't know. Cheetah Shaw, right? Yeah. Juice, juice Shaw, yeah. whatever you want to call him. But Yeah, I guess him versus Piotr Jan for the biggest cheater. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I still think Jan's going to beat the hell out of Sterling. Like, yeah. Like, I, next I, time I, around. It'd but. be cool to see if uh, Sterling got the win. Because remember, Sterling wasn't, like, done with that fight. Like, he wasn't was, done. He was – He was pressing a lot. It, it he was, was pressing. He was getting the he was getting beat up pretty bad. There so. was some sus scoring, though, earlier that night. You never know what judges – Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, even on his last card. Oh, that yeah. Chikagian fight, man. Oh or one of the fights in the prelims, I think it was uh, – I can't remember the names. But two different judges had it 30-27 for 
opposing fighters. It's just like, how are you that bad? Yeah. Like what? Were you not, well, it's, it's almost like, were you even watching? <laughs> well, it's in Texas, and Texas State Athletic Commission isn't exactly good at scoring fights. They have a history of boxing and boxing matches where they uh, right. kind of, yeah, screw the pooch a little bit. So, so yeah, but either way, then, and then that's just going right back to the bandweight division that we're talking about. That is by far the most exciting division right now. Yep, that, yeah, I think it is. Not knocking any other division, but man, I mean, there's just endless yeah. fights that you could. Yeah, there's, up there. there's so many just high level guys, guys that are coming up still. It's it's nuts, man. Yeah. So I mean, like, there's no solid champion. Like this guy is the best. Every other division, I think, has a, at least a semblance of like you know this guy's the best. Yeah. Right. It's, or the yeah. top two, at least. I guess at featherweight, but at least. But yeah. Uh, Either way, a lot of fun fights in the future for that. But uh, did you see, going back to that Dillashaw card really quick, because remember Diego Sanchez pulled out? Yeah. Did you see that thing with him and his coach and Megan O'Leary and, and uh, Paul Felder? Yeah, dude, That the guy that handles him, uh, his manager, dude's an absolute real piece of shit, man. Yeah. Uh, oh, he was getting blasted on, what's his freaking name? Like Fabi, Fabier or something? Fa- Fabian something. Yeah. And he was going, and he's like, Oh, he's like, I'm not. I'm just trying to have a conversation. What was I don't. Know, what was he even mad about? Is, did they make him pull out of that? Fight? Joshua Fabia. So how it was was uh, apparently Fabia was complaining about um, something about Sanchez's medical history. Yeah. Or he hid something with Sanchez's medical history, and it's he's just for the last couple of years he's just had Sanchez like almost brainwashed. Like, hey, I'm your manager. I know what's best for you. It's gotten to the point where Sanchez has had to talk about he's had to disown family members and stuff because of it. And it's like, I hate to say, because Sanchez, is, he's an awesome fighter. Like, I love watching him, like, fight and stuff. But, but then s- stuff like, uh, then this uh, Joshua Fabia guy starts claiming, like, Dana White's sleeping with some of the female fighters. Yeah, come on, And it's dude. like, dude. Get the hell out of here. And then he was like, like when he's yelling at, like, Megan Olive, like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. And, and I was reading here; it looked like Sanchez was gonna announce his retirement after that fight, anyways. So yeah, it's you hate to see it, man. And he's—I saw he announced he's, he's leaving. The, he's done with the UFC too. So. Yeah, like if you're gonna get mad at somebody, I mean, I feel like Megan Olivia's not the right person to be yelling yeah. at. She's well, just there, man. That's why um, Paul was like, "What are you doing, dude? Like, get out of here!" And then he—he he was like, he just sounded like he was delusional almost, almost. But. Um, yeah, it looked like, and I'm just reading on Dillashaw here too. Uh, it will likely push the fight. It looks like end of June. It'll have to be after the June 12 card. Mm-hmm. So um, there's our possible uh, return for for DJ Cheetah Shaw or whatever you want to call him. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, hopefully it's him and Sandhagen again because I want to see that fight. Yeah, that would be a scrap too. So hopefully yeah, he, he does a clean fight. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, other than that, uh, like I said, we have a lot. I'm sorry, I'm just pulling up the. I mean, June 12th is the next pay per view. So a couple couple of weeks. Yeah, um, we'll be going in depth on that because I'm very excited for that card. Very fun card. That's ah, gonna be awesome. So there's two title fights and still a three a, a five round fight yep. which is Diaz and Edwards cuz that had to get pushed back I saw until they threw mm-hmm. on that card but so that'll be fun um and then uh yeah then the fifth um Walt Harris fights on that card again there's a it's Rolls and Shrucks headlining but uh, Walt Harris obviously had the terrible story about his uh, mm-hmm. daughter so uh, yeah I remember remember yeah. when that all happened that was awful Always- Always fun to root for that guy. Yeah, that was definitely terrible. But other than that, yeah, there's just a, we got a couple of weeks off. But well, don't worry. Um, for our listeners who obviously someone's listening, because uh, boss man Jack told me today he got an email saying we're top 100 in the combat sports category category for a podcast. So hey, hell yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there's 100 podcasts total or what. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing our best. We're doing our best. We'll take it. Right. That's the yeah. Case. An achievement is an achievement, so we'll make like a, a fake plaque or something, or have like a maybe like a Dundee or, or something. Yeah, buy a, just buy like one of those wrestling belts, just like right top yeah. 100 on it in Sharpie. Top 100 uh, yeah. combat uh, sports podcast. So yeah, um, yeah. So for those of you listening, don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna be providing you with uh, a show each week. We'll find something to chit chat about. Maybe we'll get bubbly oh, yeah. again because uh, with with O'Malley coming up. 
I know that he's not the biggest fan of his hair, so maybe we can get one of those going again. I don't understand that. <laughs> I mean, I feel like they'd get along really well. I mean, they're both pretty colorful guys, like yeah. just like hanging out, being with the boys, doing crazy stuff. I mean, whatever. Don't really I think Sean would fit in pretty, pretty well with us, honestly. Yeah, so. Well, yeah. but maybe maybe rethink your relationship with uh, with Sean, and maybe maybe Sean if Sean if Sean ever listens to this and you want to come on the show with Bubba and we can do a one on one, and that would get some clicks, I think, right? And get a sponsorship from Doctor Dabber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, because I saw I saw a post like him just like sitting in his uh, in his robe, the marijuana robe he's got, yeah. with like one of those uh, d- electronic dab rigs. It's just like which honestly looks pretty sick. Yeah. Just like front kicking a dummy. It's like, that's yeah. pretty sick. Did you see his viral? It was a TikTok that he made about what to do when you're, if you're in a bar fight. <laughs> I don't watch TikTok. It's pretty funny. He it was like, I don't uh, own TikTok. He was, uh, he, he's like throw an elbow to the throat and then go through the throat and up through and then take your hat off, put it over their eyes, slap them twice. <laughs> he's a color. Yes. color uh, he's got a color. What, what word am I looking for? He has a good, charismatic there we go he's very charismatic man he's he's got the whole package it's just yeah. uh he's so young too he's only like 25 26 right yeah but he's a guy hopefully he'll be around another 10 years doing his getting involved in those shenanigans and yeah. stuff but. right so let's get him against garbrandt let's uh him and cody if he wins that i mean there we go sky's the limit, man. put on a main card too i mean that could even headline uh oh that could absolutely headline yeah definitely but um but yeah, that's about all we got. Um, Coleman's got uh, got a skedaddle here too, so um, that is a wrap on 10K MMA for I believe it's show four due to the mm-hmm. fun of it. So yeah, uh, we'll see you guys next time.